Welcome to the Dream Boat. Remember, you can join the DRI for just £30 a year. You get access to more content, including videos and discounts for our events. It's a great way of finding out more about our work, joining our dream community, and supporting this podcast. Details in the show notes and at driccpe.org.uk forward slash membership. Welcome to the Dream Boat Podcast, a place where we talk about everything dreamy, all you wanted to know about dreams and where you might find some answers. My name is Dave Billington, and I'm a psychotherapist, and I'm also director of the Dream Research Institute. And I'm joined by fellow psychotherapist, Laura Payne. Hello, I'm Laura Payne, and I'm also part of the Dream Research Institute. And we're called the Dream Boat because we are actually recording our podcast on a beautiful canal barge here at Little Venice in London called the Boat Pod. We'll be looking at dreams, talking to guest experts, and answering your questions. Now, let's get on with the episode. Cultures around the world and throughout history have deep connections with the dream world. Dreaming has either been ritualized and incorporated into a religious or spiritual practice, or seen as part of a medicinal or healing system. And today we're going to look at the role that dreaming plays in shamanism. Yes, shamanism is arguably one of the oldest religions in the world, dating back to the Paleolithic times of cave dwelling. The word itself actually originates from North Asia around Mongolia, but it's used nowadays to indicate someone who holds the spiritual healing counsellor function in many indigenous cultures. Today, modern shamanism can be found in all societies and follows many of the ancient precepts, including the dreaming practices. So to discuss this further, we are delighted to welcome Evelyn MacDonald, formerly of the UK Shamanic Council, who also works as a shamanic spiritual teacher and healer. Eve, welcome. Oh, good afternoon and thank you for inviting me. So we're going to start just by asking you maybe about your personal story Mm -hmm. and uh, how did you come to be on the shamanic path? As a child, I understand from my my parents and my grandmother in particular, who was also a medicine woman, as well as all my aunties, um, they they recognised that I was in tune to spirit from, from a baby and... They encouraged it by just allowing me to be who I am. And when I left and came to England, my world changed. I, the culture was different, so I had to embrace where I, where I lived. But I also craved my own homeland. Um, I went to school and did all the normal things, and I studied, and I worked in corporate for many years. But that call inside of me remained. I was always close to nature. Um, Animals always attracted to me. I loved mountains and the water. So I knew that was never going to change. Um, Over the years being in corporate, what I realized with any spiritual calling, when you get the call, you have to answer. (laughs) Whether you like it or not, this is your pathway, you must answer. I took a little while before I answered. And in doing so, um, Kate brought on sickness. And when I became sick, and I had to make some choices as to which direction I wanted to go in. I chose to um, ease up on uh, the corporate, but I wanted to follow my heart. The mountains called me, and my my gift started becoming really strong. It de- I didn't have to develop it. It just became as though I was that one-year-old running around, seeing, doing and playing with whoever came. And in doing so, it gave me the confidence to say, right, I can make the the choices I want to make now. So I went looking for a tribe at Shaman's. Um, I knew what I was capable of because people would ask me questions I would or I've always been able to see if someone's pregnant I can tell them before they know they're pregnant Um, I would be able to feel the the fetus Um, if someone's sick I would be able to say to them you need to go to a doctor and let them know this this and this so and 
this is this is how it's been. Some people liked it. Some people got afraid, became afraid of it. However, most people learned to accept it and accepted me for who I am. So, Eve, just tell us a little bit more about the role that dreaming itself plays in the work of a shaman. Dreaming is important. Um, this is where we go for inspiration, for guidance, direction. Um, we we go into that space for also to clear our own thoughts and to heal our our bodies and to look deeper in within our own minds. It enables me to go in for myself and as well as for other people. Um, it also for the earth. When you hear the calling and the cry for help, we go and we support it. But we go into that dream space and we go with our collective, our teachers, our guides and our soul family. And that in itself, when we walk this path, you get to know, understand, appreciate, but also it's that deep, deep trust that comes within that partnership of working within the spirit world. We go for remedies, we go for, um, we, we go for ideas, we go for knowledge, wisdom and understanding. That's how I'd like to put it, with knowledge, wisdom and understanding, because it covers a whole, a whole multitude. Mm -hmm. It's almost like what some modern day dreamers would call a form of lucid dreaming, where you know you're preparing, and we'll talk about dream preparation mm -hmm. for, the, for the shaman, but almost how you prepare to go in for the dream it becomes an important part so that you can control the dream when you're then in it. So for a shaman, what typically do you do to prepare for a dream? Thank you. That's a really good question. <laughs> um, first of all, I would prepare my uh, myself, my, myself as physically as a person. I would cleanse my body. Um, I use herbs. I use salts. I use essential oils. And I use crystals to, to, to all the methods that, um, it depends on where you're going to be going with it and which direction. But it's to get an understanding that until you cleanse yourself, you can't step into the, the dream space knowing that clarity is what you want, understanding that you want. You, you won't be able to understand whether it's your mind dictating the journey or your spiritual self dictating that journey with the help and cooperation of your spirit family. It sounds lovely. And I know that today we're very excited because you've brought your drama and <laughs> yes, rattle. I, <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a good moment to say, shall we get them out and play? <laughs> because uh, I know that part drumming is an important part of... Uh, the dreaming and vision questing and, and whatnot. Yes, it is. The drum is my horse. It's my travelling companion. It is um, It is my left hand and it's my right hand. Aww. When you ha when you acquire your drum, it chooses you as well as you chooses the drum. You put out to the universe what it is that you want. My drum came through me t through dreams as I placed my dreams out. And... When I received it, it was, you know, it became like a best friend. So you actually dreamt this drum? I now dreamt I all my drums. Wow. Yeah. So I should say, uh, do you want to pick it up one? Well, Eve's getting the drum. I should say that this is an amazing drum. It's, it's about two feet wide in circumference. And eight, <laughs> oh, she's correcting me, 18 inches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, she made it. Evelyn has made this drum and has also decorated it. It's made out of buffalo hide, I believe, Eve. It is buffalo hide, yes. Yeah. So I've how called would... for a buffalo hide. Um, I've also called for reindeer. So whatever, you, where the heart drives the intention, you'll find what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many people out there at the moment, not as much as years gone by, who are creators of um, sacred drums and by putting your request out there, they will also hear it. And you will find that you'll be directed where to go and 
who to to look for when and you will find your drum okay so um if you were preparing for a dream what would it sound like on the drum right so i would hold in my heart and as i would call uh, my spirit family and honor the spirit of the drum as well as the beater the beater was born uh, born with the drum so and it has two two sides to it so So while Evelyn's doing this, I should say that she's got this very large drum that looks like a sort of fluffy mitten on a beautiful stick. Now I wait. I honour the spirit of the drum. I call the family. And I ask them now, just this demonstration to just guide... Okay, the drum only needs a soft beat. I indicate when I'm journeying what it is that I'm needing help and support with. If it's for an individual, I will name the individual. If it's for myself, I will indicate it's myself. If it is for the earth or the universe, I will call upon the earth, the spirit of the earth, and I'll also call for the spirit of all the elements to help and support me. The, the tempo will change as it takes you deeper into that space. The tempo will change when I'm due coming and returning. In that short space, information's been given to me and therefore I know and I will impart that information with myself or with yourselves or whoever I've drummed for. I can use the drum to, to take me into that altered space of consciousness and out of my own mind because my heart connects to the drum, my soul connects to the drum, and the soul will do the journey. And I will hold the space, the beater will beat by itself. Because mm. mm -hmm. it will then know when it's time to return. Is there a difference for the shaman? I mean, and thank you, that was really beautiful. Mm. Is there a difference for the shaman between um, entering the dream space and... Um, entering the drum space and entering uh, what I know is known as a vision quest, do, sh do shamans feel that they're all slightly different forms of consciousness? Yes, because it is, Laura. And it, uh, what happens, because your intent will provide you with the passage, so you'll know at which level are you going within... The, the lower realms of the, the earth, middle realm, or the higher and upper realm. So it depends on what it is that you're seeking. If I was looking f to, to bring that energy to support our world, like as I said just now, I would call on everyone for their support, simply because the universal love wants the very best for us. And calling the elements would also it 
means that everyone's coming aboard and everyone's agreeing. So it strengthens the intent. It strengthens the message. And the dream becomes a lot stronger and greater and purposeful. Mm. The vision quest, it's a different type of beat. Yet again, you set your intention. But the vision quest has different components to it. You would use this to help clear your path in preparation for the vision quest. You would use it also first and second stage. The first stage is knowing that you're going to be going on a vision quest and therefore you would take that time to make changes and adapt your lifestyle and, and what you're um, ingesting it within your body, change your food, which, watch the things you need to remove. So your body becomes clear and clean. It has to be um, a vessel, a true vessel. At the second stage, it's knowing that when you get to that, the actual vision quest, all your intents and what's the purpose is and who's going to be supporting you on that journey. And yet again, the, the, the drum becomes your main tool also. Also, you, you use your surroundings, knowing that you, you've cleansed your body, you've been working on your mind, but the second stage will is that where you when you actually prepare yourself and you say to yourself, OK, I'm ready, the drum will tell you whether or not you purposefully you are ready <laughs> because your mi if your mind interferes with it or you come across obstacles or triggers on that, that pathway, you will, you will find yourself struggling. Because mm -hmm. the third stage is... You know, when you go to the vision quest, you've spent three, four, five, six days or seven days. It's entirely up to you. And you're isolated. You're away from civilization. You find yourself in a space where it's just you and your, your teachers, you and your mind, you and your physical body. How well have you prepared yourself for this journey? And are you able to go the distance? Because when you're on your own in that space, nighttime, whatever the, the weather, sunshine and rain <laughs> during the day, rain at night, <laughs> snow, sleet, whichever <laughs> comes your way, you are on your own. And that's why it's important to get your mind sorted and prepare your mind for the journey. Because it's the duration and it's the journey itself. It's all part and parcel. Mm. But I, I also understand, you know, the dreaming space is also a journey for, for the shaman. So if you were working with someone, they would come to see you. Uh, you would, I know that you do treatments and things like that. Do you then find that when they've gone or with them that you drum and then you go into the dream space? Or do you go into the dream space normally when the client has left and, and journey to find something for them? I, to prepare for my clients... I, once I've, I know their appointment is coming up, what I do is I will meditate. I meditate. I then communicate with my spirit family, my teachers, my guides, and ask them, what is, how are we going to do it? What is my role? Because I don't just take it for granted, oh, they've come in, I'll be able to do this or that. It, it is a collaboration. It's a team. And the trust... It's about me trusting and willingly open myself to be a vessel. And that vessel has to be able to hear, listen, feel and be directed. So I will meditate first, get any answers, get collect as much information as possible, collect data also. <laughs> um, and what, when they... When it is time for me to, uh, the day before, I will journey again. But this time, with a knowingness of what it is I'm going to be doing. If it's a soul retrieval, I call in the entire universe. Do you want to just say a bit more of what a soul retrieval means mm -hmm. for a shaman? 
first a for a shamanic practitioner or um, healer, a, a soul retrieval is where um, an individual has experienced severe trauma in their life. Um, and in doing so, you get you you find yourself in that f f um, fight or flight stage. And when you get to that flight and fright stage, our natural instincts is to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And this, that aspect of your soul, um, which connects to that fear or trauma, will break away from the, the whole soul itself. And when it breaks away, it will remain where the trauma took place. So as a shaman, um, walking in both the spiritual world and the physical world, it is the, the journey we take together is to locate it. And once we, um, when we locate it, we have to understand how we're going to approach that aspect. But that is why the creator, the source of life, he has made provision for all of that. Because when the soul has broken away, they're not left on their own. They will be given a guardian to look after the aspect. Otherwise, we won't be able to find it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've just got to trust that it will be there. Yeah. And when we get there, it's for me then to spend time with it and encourage it and it coax it and let it see that and feel my heart that what I'm doing is about love, it's about respect, it's about dignity and honour. And that's, you have to gain their trust. Mm. Otherwise, the aspect of the individual will remain. Likewise, they can come back and the individual has, who it's to be replaced back into, that's fine. However, if the individual continues on that road of destruction, the aspect which has been replaced will return back to the, the area it initially came mm and where the f fear or fight took place. Dave, I am really struck, I don't know about you, I, I, while he hearing Eve talk about uh, the notion of Arnie Mendel's The Dreaming Body mm -hmm. and how similar the shamanic path is to uh, uh, noting the body and what happens to the body in the dream as part of the process and how at the DRI that's something that's very close to our hearts as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it would make sense to me that that's the, the fundamental principle when we're working with something that has ancient roots like the shamanism has yes. come back to the original yes and uh, and that's why it's important because as human beings um that's just a form we have taken for what we are are wise evolved souls we are on a pathway um, and we've come for an experience, whether we are in a pathway to heal or whether to support uh, or whether to engage as a human be in a human form to see and experience it so we can help other humans when we return. Whatever the situation, we have to know and understand that it's about accepting your pathway as a human. And when we lose that aspect of ourselves, we, we're not able to do the job that we came for, mm. our purpose. So when we understand our purpose and we know that something is missing, because intuitively we, get, we feel something is missing. Intuitively, I felt I wasn't following my dream in corporate and I knew something was, was not right because it wasn't making me, it was no longer making me happy. Mm -hmm. And so the same applies when aspects of our soul's missing. We walk the path knowing it is missing because knowing something is definitely not correct. And as a shaman, when we work, we, we work to try to um, recover and retrieve and bring back. The soul is then lifted and taken so it can be healed. That aspect of the soul must be healed before returning. 
Yeah, I love it. We talk a lot, uh, you know, we're intrigued by the notion of the dreaming state or, as you say, the dreaming body or the dreaming world as a healing space. And that has followed through from very ancient cultures through to now. And it's wonderful to hear that obviously modern day shamanism is keeping that notion going, that it is the dream space can be such a fruitful and powerful healing space. It's, it's a place where uh, our spirit family can connect to us. You don't have to be intuitive on a physical level, but the dream space is where it's, it's open to, to us all. And we can go in there at night or day, whatever, or purposefully enter that space and find yourself, find aspects of your dream there. You place your dreams out, it, they will be in there because this is your pathway. And if you know that, that your heart has a calling and you can't understand why, you will say, there's something about me, something's missing. I don't understand what it is, but I just know that it is. And then that individual steered to one person then that person would say, go and see that person. <laughs> and then that person would say, well, you need to go and see Eve. <laughs> 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 and, that's, and so bringing the journey to a place where help can be administered, the soul can be helped and uh, healed and replaced. But it's also my job to ensure that it stays because by teaching the individual, getting them to understand when you've, when you've experienced such trauma, it's not always easy to let go. Mm. And when their heart is ready to let go, it makes the job a lot, much easier. Well, I must admit, Evelyn has uh, lit some wonderful <laughs> incense in here, so we're all feeling quite heady <laughs> and dreamy. I know you've brought your rattle. Should we just have a quick go of the rattle? I'm intrigued to hear what that sounds like. And uh, Maybe tell us a little bit about oh, it. Yes, as well. I should say to people, it's a, sort of like a long hide stick with some string tied at either end. It looks like a giant dog's bone. <laughs> <laughs> it's made of skin. <laughs> it's, it's made of reindeer skin, oh. and it's got two pockets. Either In the end. centre, we've got we've got the wood, and it's just covered with crystals. Crystals I love, and within there, there be. Uh, it's beading like seeds. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have one side. Is the, the masculine? Ah. Oh. We have one side which is the feminine. Oh, it sounds very Jungian, doesn't it? A Jungian rattle. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> and it's used for cleansing and clearing space, for cleansing energy, and to move uh, obstacles out of the path. Yeah, yeah. So, so I. He's coming towards Dave now with the rattle. He's going to be cleansed and cleared. <laughs> He's looking very happy by this. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Well, I think that's cleared our space ready for Dream of the Week, actually. It seems yes. like a good uh, moment to go across. And I think Eve's brought a Dream of the Week for us. So uh, uh, we'll hand over to Eve to, to read out her, her Dream of the Week. And we'll have a little look at it from a shamanic point of view and if enough time from other perspectives. Yes, Laura, thank you. It's so funny how this one's come about because I was, I, I was thinking, OK... I've been so busy this week, I haven't documented many of my dreams. And But I said to the, before going to bed, as I always do, please send me the dream I need to take to the podcast. And that's, this is, so I was, I was in that space, one foot in the spiritual world and one in the physical world. And I sat with, uh, with my teachers and I called 
and I asked for guidance. And so I asked, so it was granted. A t television screen appeared in front of me. Although I was in a calm and stillness, in that drifting space, not quite asleep, but not, not quite awake, I saw the screen and in there I could see the entire universes with the planets, the stars, the galaxies, the constellations. And I saw all the spectrum moving and weaving out. I saw sacred symbols, all the geometric symbols come, go flowing in and out, in and out. And then the picture became greater and all of all the pictures, all that's been shown to me, all the elements of the creation was held within this enormous sphere and it contained all that, that there is within the universe. And so I was watching and watching it with such with excitement and the greater grid just held all everything that was moving in, in capturing and holding each within itself. The sphere, the sphere shape, you know, it represents the source of life, the Father, God, or the, or the eternal light. And as I looked with excitement in my heart, I was just feeling it and feeling it and going with it. I then stopped and I just held that gaze. And as I held the gaze, I saw a great big moon came. And then I saw the sun came. And what I saw, the, the moon just came right up in front of me. And the sun came from the, the left and it just embraced it as though it was a masculine playing and dancing with the feminine. And they both danced this beautiful dance and they held that space and the sun was going behind the, the moon and it wrapped itself and came round at the front. And they just dance and they, I allowed myself to just go and feel the rhythm and watch the rhythm. This went on for a little while. And then I asked, what is the essence of the, this dream? What is the purpose of this being brought before me? And I was told, and these are the words, it's with harmony and oneness. When we have harmony and we are at one with all, there is love. We are all supported throughout the, the create throughout the creation. Our creator, the source of life. There is no separation. There's no division. Teach the world. The message is, we are all one. Wow. That's a lovely message. What an amazing dream. I feel really <laughs> honoured that you've brought that one on board, Eve. Thank you very much. It doesn't get any bigger than that. It <laughs> is. Well. Very good to have a lovely, clear message to, to broadcast to, 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 to as much of the world as, as is listening. So from a shamanic point of view, I love this notion of the cosmic dance. Um, what's a, give us a brief interpretation of how you would view all of those symbols and what they would mean mm. from a shamanic point of view. From a shamanic point of view, um, Laura, it, we, all, we, we all are spirit in a physical body and within that we all hold the geometric symbols and that geometric symbols is what collect, connects us to all creation all wells, the, the source of life, the creator, God. And that dance we saw, it's to remind us, sometimes on the earth plane we, we have off days, we're down and we feel low and empty and we need, it's to, for us to remember We've got some great sounds coming by the bar. We're We've got cosmic dance, <laughs> small children playing outside. It's lovely. He brings the world in. <laughs> and, uh, yes, it's so funny that we're talking about the dance and music. Mm -hmm. But so when we remember we're held, it will uplift us and strengthen mm -hmm. us. It's about being able to 
lift our vibration. When we're low, we work from a low level energy. That's the density of living in a physical world and being in a physical presence. But when we can lift our energy and lift and, and raise it and out of that vibration, that lower vibration, we get to sense and feel more. We get, get to feel and we become more in tuned with what is, what is happening within other worlds and, and universes. And when we do, and we sit in meditation, we go into the dream space, we can see ourselves held within that space and feel the dance and the rhythm of the dance and the magic that comes with it. So when we wake, we wake revitalized and uh, full of enthusiasm and feeling as though we have we have won the largest jackpot in the <laughs> lottery. <laughs> and knowing that we are we are at peace. Mm, we are at oneness mm. with with life. We walk in the meadow, we see trees, we see it for the first time, and it just allows our heart to balloon and, and open up, then your energy opens up and the trees will then dance with you. The flowers will dance with <laughs> you. The magic of, the, of the na Mother Nature, you will sense and feel it. You'll feel the sky and the sky family. And you, when you walk and you feel all of that, you think to yourself, I don't want to leave this place. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's the dance with the creation, with creation. Mm. Being in that oneness. Anything come up for you with that dream that you want to comment on at all? Well, just hearing you talk and I'm remembering certain experiences that, that I've had through, through my own dreams. But I'm, I'm also really reminded of um, when we talked to Robert Wagoner, uh, here and we talk. Uh, we're going to talk to our, my colleague Melinda Powell, talking about being in in a lucid dreaming state, and what happens when you become aware, but you stop trying to make something happen for yourself, and you just ask yourself, "What is this place that I'm in? What am I experiencing right now?" And and the beautiful and amazing experiences that come out. I say experiences, but it's it's realization, realization and experience all at once, and that sense of being connected to something, being part of something. And I love that idea of that. It's a dance. You're dancing with it. And that's exactly how they looked. <laughs> Can you imagine a mother and a child together? That bond is so close in the attachment. Mm. But someday that child has to leave that nest and, and fly, go and find themselves. The mother grieves, the child grieves because the mother is grieving and the mother's grieving because the child doesn't know what the world holds out there for it. But when we have that rhythm of the dance, in, instead of thinking, oh, where is my child going and who's going to be looking after it? You say, you know, I believe I have instilled sufficient in my child. He knows where I am and I know where he is. And when I need to feel him, I will close my eyes and think of him mm -hmm. and he will, I will send my message to him. That is lovely. I'm thinking that uh, uh, it'd be really nice for Evelyn to uh, beat us out. Um, I was wondering whether Dave holds the rattle and and uh, and Eve takes on the drum and we sort of end uh, this session musically. <laughs> And, uh, oh, no, it's going to be the other way around, says Eve. Dave is going to have a go on the drum. So I'm going to say um, sweet dreams and um, over to you, Dave, for your ending. Yes, keep dreaming and keep sharing your dreams.
So, thank you for joining us for this week's episode. Don't forget to like us and leave comments on your favourite podcast platform. As I'm sure you know, that's the way we build an audience for the Dreamboat podcast and also to spread news about dreaming. And as we said, there are many ways you can share your dreams at the DRI, the Dream Research Institute. Yes, we have courses, events and workshops and we want to hear from you. So check out the show notes for links or find us on Instagram and on our Facebook page and on our website at driccpe.org.uk. And if you want to explore your dreams further or you would like to support us, you can join the DRI as a member for just £30 a year. As a member, you will get discounts for all of our events and short courses. You'll get our newsletter with latest dream research news, and we'll also be adding other special member benefits during the year. Of course, members' dreams will always be given preference for reading on the podcast Dream of the Week slot. So go to the link on the show notes and become a DRI member today. Keep dreaming and keep sharing your dreams. <laughs>